He had Nehemiah. Nehemiah is not like the rule book, who's taking a remnant back. He's not like Ezra, who's taking a remnant back. Nehemiah is different in that he is in the Persian Empire. While they were in Babylonian, a, 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 a lot of the Israelites grew up to be significant. They, 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 they lived in a different culture, but they became prominent, yeah. very significant. Yeah. God still was blessing his people now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, them Jews were coming up being somebody. Yeah. They, were, they were awesome. God was, when you study the text, you understand, my God, even when God put them in Babylon in exile, right. captivity, they still were prospering. Right. My goodness. Yeah. He's been prospering everywhere you go. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't do nothing to them. They still blessed. That's why he said you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you're coming, blessed when you're going. My goodness, wherever you went, they were blessed. You can look at Jews right now, they're still blessed. Come on, somebody. They own everything. I'm just trying to, look, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so here we have Nehemiah, who has risen to a certain level in the Persian Empire. What level is that? Well, the Bible says he's the cupbearer to the king. That's right. yeah. mm. He has this Jew who's, a, who's, a, who's, a, who's risen to a level in, in, in the Persian Empire, similar to Joseph, who would bring up significance. Right. Here he is, he the rose up significant. Right. And he said, I'm a cupbearer to the king. That's What's a cupbearer? Come on, talk about it. He break it down, let you know who Nehemiah was. Nehemiah was not just an armor bearer, right. bearing arms. Oh, bear, bear on. You got something right here. Yeah. And you make a move, we're going to handle you. Yeah. That's all, bear. Yeah. Okay? He's bearing arms. Yeah. Somebody say, he's bearing arms. Yeah. I don't know if you're bearing arms, but praise God bless you. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I ain't getting that wrong. <laughs> but they bear arms. But a cup bear, somebody like he bear a cup. Come on, come on, Bearing a cup. Why, why, why? Because, because when the king, yeah. in that day, because kingdoms were overthrown and whatnot, and all, somebody always do, if I can get the king, I got the kingdom. That's right. So, so they were always trying to figure out how can I assassinate the king. Still like that today. Come on, still like that today. And so what unique thing with respects to him, is that my point? Praise God. Uh, uh, the unique thing about uh, 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 Nehemiah was that he was a cupbearer. So the, the king got some food brought to him, some of the drink brought to him, First person to eat was Nehemiah. So you bring out all this food for the king, and the king sitting there on the throne, he said, go ahead, go ahead and eat. So Nehemiah would eat. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, he watched him. Nehemiah, everything good? You straight? Okay, well, go ahead and eat this. <laughs> so he would get to eat. This is, this is every day, three times a day, how many times a day? He's a cup bearer for the king. Some drink, or some drink, whatever he was drinking. <laughs> he, uh, same thing. They said, Nehemiah, he would drink some. They watch him. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 5 minutes, 2. Okay? Okay? By now, she hit the bloodstream. You good? You good? Okay, I can drink. <laughs> the picture. He was a cupbearer to the king. And so, therefore, if you protected my life on that level, then guess what? You've got to be significant. He was his trusted advisor. He was tight with the king. We rolled like this. We boys for real. Because yeah. you guard my life on a whole other level. Yeah. Mm, he was a cupbearer to the king. Say cupbearer to the king. Cupbearer to the king. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this Nehemiah, as a cupbearer to the king, he was also an affluent man. And he was also a very, very uh, well off man. You, you, there's no way in the world he was that close to the king in Rome. Right. Struggling. Right. Yeah, yeah, he had some prominence. Yeah. He had some prominence. But even though he had some prominence, even though he was significant, he was still an Israelite. He was still a Jew. He was still somebody who loved his people. Bishop talks about being a leader. He talks about three points. You have to be competent. You have to be one who has character and one who has courage. Bishop, I'm going to add two more. You can have them for free. You know, uh, 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 two others I would add. You've got to have compassion. And before compassion, you've got to have conviction. You gotta be convicted about something. Yeah. And then you gotta have the compassion to wanna do something about it. Yes. Amen? Yes. Nehemiah was such a man. He had conviction and he had compassion. Let us go to Nehemiah 1. Mm, 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 mm. Bless your name. He understands there is still work to be done and that the walls that surround the city have to be rebuilt. 
He focuses on the walls because he understands that without walls, there is no protection. He understands that without walls, thieves can break in and steal. Without walls, predators and pedophiles can come in and violate their women and their children. He understands without walls, doctors or devils can come in and distort the minds of the people and cause discord and division. So Nehemiah gives attention to the wall. A wall protects, it guards, and it insulates what's on the inside. Somebody say guard until you get it. He understands that you can have something that is beautiful and great that can stand on its very own compared to anything out there, but there's nothing, if there's nothing to protect it, then it's something to attack in captivity. That's why a man is a protector. He's a husband. He has something beautiful that stays great, stands on his own compared to anything out there. And that's why he just won't let anybody want to talk to him. Amen? Because he's a protector. He's a wise protector. He won't let anybody in her, in her face just pump their guns. Amen? He tried to build a wall. Somebody say build a wall. Build a wall. Mm -hmm. He builds a wall. If it's valuable to him, he's going to protect it. A husband is one that bans the house. Two words. House and ban. He bans the house. He watches it coming in. What's going out? He's checking everything. Doctrines, understandings, philosophies, ideologies. He's checking everything at the door. A real man. He ain't let everything in. What you say? Man, I was thinking about, well, let's scrutinize that. I'm going to scrutinize that. Where'd you get that information from? Why? Because I have a responsibility to make sure the devil don't infiltrate my home. With all kinds of foolishness and, and beliefs and ideologies. And now my wife is going wayward. He's a husband. He bans the house. You don't let anybody run up on your wife and start talking to your wife. Something wrong with you? What are they talking about? What y'all talking about? Not that I'm insecure. I'm a protector. I ban the, there's a difference. I ban the house. I'm responsible for this. What you going through? I got to sit you what you going through. I got to be all that. I got to communicate with my wife. You don't understand it. Because I got to make sure I'm sensing what's the pulse of the house. Yes. Yes. You might be discouraged and, and, and upset. And, and who, who you talking to at work? Who? <laughs> Eddie. Eddie used to be a girl name back in the day, but Eddie ain't no girl name now. Who's Eddie? <laughs> you better ask somebody. You better start asking questions. <laughs> Who's she talking to? You need to ban your house. You need to guard it until they get it. If you have anything worth having, you're going to put a wall on it. And then when she get mad at you, and you get mad at her, don't be acting a fool with her. If you don't want them to see it, put a wall on it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Beyonce said they put a ring on it. Put a wall on it. See, a ring is a type of wall. If you don't want them to see it, put a wall on it. Build a wall around it. A ring is a type of wall. Amen? Otherwise, you just bump your guns because somebody looking over, first thing men do, for the most part, uh, 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 they look and see if there's a ring on the finger. If you married and you ain't got no ring on your finger, there ain't no wall. Somebody say, okay, no, ain't no wall. <laughs> men who are responsible, respectful men, they see a, a ring, they see a wall, they keep moving. Yeah. But if you ain't got no wall, it's like, how you doing? God bless you. God bless you. How you, God bless you, sister. God bless you. <laughs> Amen? Because they don't see no wall. Amen? 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 So you the marry, you need to put your wall on. Put your wall up. Yeah, yeah. And when you get around me, don't be hiding it. Just put it out there. You know what I'm saying? I got a wall. I got a wall on it. Just in case you got it twisted. Got a wall on it. Somebody say put a wall on it. So Nehemiah, after his contemporary Ezra, the scribe, is moved with compassion to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He realized that God is restoring his people back to where they were as a nation, called out to worship him in, in order that the wall of protection might be erected to safeguard the work of God. The history of Israel has been forever under attack since it uh, seized and taken captive, and Nehemiah says enough is enough, and he makes it a point to get the wall up for the protection of God's people. The promise of God must be guarded. 
So how do we guard what God has given us? Let's go into the book of Nehemiah. I won't be for you long from this point. There's several points I'm going to share with you on how to guard it until they get it. Nehemiah. 